coming, coming up, up on Chopper's politics. politics. That was rubbish. One more go. Well, that's because you're counting. Was no, rubbish. you do. Three, three two, two right, one. Three, two, one. Coming, coming up, up on, on Chopper's politics. politics. You didn't like him. Uh, your sceptics loved him. I, yes. I wonder whether. If you're listening, Liz bad, Truss, not cool. a bad shout there. From of course she's listening, podcast. Chris. Goodness me. I'm Christopher Hope, the Telegraph's Associate Editor for Politics. And after one of the longest job interviews in history, as she put it herself, Liz Truss is a new Tory leader and, from tomorrow, Prime Minister of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. It was one of the world's worst kept secrets that the former Foreign Secretary was probably going to win the leadership contest with Rishi Sunak. But what can we expect from a Liz Truss premiership? What will it mean for the Tory party and, more importantly, the country? You and me. As real life is about to enter politics, with all the subtlety of a giant wave crashing on the beach of Westminster, wiping away all of those carefully constructed ministerial castles made of sand. Well, my colleagues Camilla Tomney, our associate editor, and Gordon Rayner, another associate editor, are with me now in the studio at Telegraph Towers to chew over the fat. Gordon Rayner and Camilla Tomney, our associate editors, welcome to Chopper's Politics. Great to have you on. An emergency edition. Gordon Rayner, mm. what just happened? Well, Chris, I can tell you, and this is, this is news you won't have heard yet, that <laughs> Liz Truss is going to be the new Prime Minister. Ah. She is already the leader of the Conservative Party, Yes. after winning the leadership race by 80-odd thousand votes to 60,000, so yes. about a 4-3 to three, uh, majority, yes. uh, a bit less than the 2-1 to one that people thought she was going to get, but a pretty healthy winning margin. It's, it's the smallest margin since members had a vote That's in right. 98. I mean, it Camilla is. Tomlin, is that a problem for her? Well, uh, they say this, you know, she might have the membership, but she doesn't have the parliamentary party, although we had a lot of people switching at the last minute. Can't think why. Could Mm. it be that they want a cabinet job? As MPs. Yeah, as MPs. But actually, you could say, well, Boris Johnson had the support of two thirds of the party and the members. And look how that ended. So Mm. she needs to focus on delivery. I thought it was interesting. She said, deliver, deliver, deliver. Why do politicians always do this thing of repeating the same (laughs) word three times? And my God, I mean, there's going to be no honeymoon, is there? She's straight in at the thick end, sailing in very, very choppy waters. So she's going to have to appoint a number of different captains to steady the ship, I'd suggest. Yeah. And where will they come from, these captains, Gordon Wayne? Will they come from across the party, from the Rishi Sunak ship now sunk, some um, flailing people in the, in the waters in Westminster, yeah. Oliver Dowden and yeah. others who want jobs? Will she throw them a, a life raft? I don't think she will, no. Um, I, I, I'm struggling to find anybody who thinks that people who've come out strongly Dominic Raab for Sunak. Well, uh, you Dominic know. Raab has kind of killed his own political career. Yeah. Mm. I don't think she's going to particularly reach out. I think she needs to fi- have people who she completely trusts. Mm. Uh, she can't afford to have people challenging her. And I think that she will uh, She will appoint almost entirely people who backed her for, for leader. Although it's and how like you know the party, Camilla well, Tomney? I, I spoke to kind of a Sunak fan earlier who was kind of expressing astonishment. She's got to reach out, hasn't she? And I thought, well, no, not necessarily, matey. But there is this sense that she can't just appoint a cabinet of loyalists because then that's going to repeat the mistakes that Johnson made of kind of having a cabinet that's supine, sort of nodding dogs, not really challenging her on the big decisions. But then there's been no love lost in this contest, has there? When I did the hustings, the two candidates weren't even willing to kind of cross paths. Mm. So the idea of her aligning herself with anything remotely Sunak-esque or indeed to one nation seems fanciful. She's trying to be the next Thatcher. And that means basically having her own loyalists and indeed right wingers on side, not least in the Treasury. Gordon Rayner, Camilla Tomlin's air said that, you know, she's, she, I would argue she's the most conservative Prime Minister, leader we have had in the, in this party since Thatcher. Mm-hmm. If you think back to John Major, his week on Europe, yep. David Cameron, a mo- moderniser who legalised gay marriage, Theresa May, Europe, no, no, no more words required, yep. and Boris Johnson, who kind of sold the party down the river on culture wars, yep. um, net zero and everything else. It seems to me that you know Liz Truss is, finally, the party's got a Tory leader. Yeah, I think so. The, the the difficult part for her now is going to be that she has got very uh, strong conservative uh, values, very strong conservative policies, but which she can't necessarily implement in full right now because of the the cost of living crisis. She she has now had to give ground on this idea of of handouts. She's she said all the way through the leadership contest. I, I you know I'm not in favour of handouts. Mm. Uh, 
but now she this won't be a handout. To. This is going to she's be a, going to have to. It's going to be a, 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 a wheelbarrow load of yeah. Yeah. pandemic-sized hundred billion pounds. Hundred billion. But this is interesting, isn't it? She's she freezing. Tells, this is freezing um, bill bills yeah, for. She, she tells the membership and, that she's not going to give handouts, and then she tells the electorate mm. she is because there's a time and a place for hard-nosed Thatcherism, and it's not necessarily in the middle mm. of a. Thatcher's a very soft, soft Tory in the early early eighties. Exactly, 80s. because she had to be, and then you know the public get used to mm. this idea of delivery, right? Having a vision and saying this is what I want to achieve and this is the kind of direction of travel for the government and indeed the country is probably a refreshing mm. change for most people. But the other thing is that I think she's conscious of and Rishi Sunak has found this out to his peril. Actually, when you're a Conservative and you give people stuff, you never get thank for it. The Conservatives will still be associated with, you know, helping the rich mm. and uh, taxing the poor, A, because we are being very highly taxed at the moment, she wants to change that, but B, because furlough money or no furlough money, they're the evil Tories. Mm. So maybe she's just more of a pragmatist than some of her yeah. predecessors. The interesting test for her will be, I think, how much do you care about how much you're liked? Because she's going to be eaten alive by the left and Twitter. I mean, she's already a bit of a hate figure. She's going to have to make really unpopular decisions in a very difficult period of political turmoil and economic hell. She's going to have to have the hide of a rhino, I would suggest. That's where the comparison with Thatcher comes in, I think. We shall divide and have to rule that way. Gordon Rennie, were you surprised by that remark in an interview with Laura Koonsberg when she said it was fair to cut taxes for rich people? Certainly interesting. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if she will look back on that and think that it maybe wasn't very politically expedient just because, um, she, you know, she, she's appealing to the Tory members and she's appealing to Tory, hardcore Tory voters there. But she needs to win quite a, a broad electorate over if she's mm. going to stay in power beyond two years. And maybe you just have to be a little bit canny uh, with, with some of that language. But uh, yes, it, I think it'll be very encouraging to, to the base, definitely. Mm. Well, I was just thinking about, you know, do you appeal? How do you unite this bizarre caucus that the Conservatives now have to manage, which is your red wallers and your sort of home counties, blue rinses? Leave you remain. Leave you remain. But isn't the, the tie that binds their sort of work? What's been interesting about Rishi's offering is it was all to people who weren't necessarily on the payroll or paying people. And it's the worker on low or high wage and indeed the employer and indeed the small and medium-sized and frankly large business that has mm. felt left behind. Mm. The Thatcher offering by your own council house and all the rest of it, wasn't that an offering to people who, regardless of whether they were white, collar or blue, wanted to keep more of their money in their pocket and be aspirational and prosperous? So actually, that's still an attractive off offering, but economically, it's there's so many pitfalls along the way yeah. because these economic choices she's going to have to make and change Well, she's boring. I mean, her big gamble yes. is the... Is the cost of borrowing on the like international markets. Like a war markets. debt. And yeah. by the way, aren't interest rates, last time I checked, going through the roof? Well, the and how much is down. the debt going to cost next yeah. year? Well, this and is what stopped Rishi. Long term borrowing is more expensive. That's right. And that's what stopped Rishi Sunak doing what Liz Truss has done. So she is yeah. gambling on jam today, not jam tomorrow. Jam uh, tomorrow is what Sunak offered. Yeah. Jam today is what well, Trust like, might deliver this week and, and in coming yeah. weeks. I mean, there's that old saying about politics being the art of the possible, isn't there? Yeah. And I think yeah. that yeah. at the moment, there just isn't really much choice. So, so, what, so what's happening this week? Gordon Wayne, you wrote a great piece of the weekend paper about what's in her inbox. You've also written a mm. piece about who's in a cabinet. Let's start with who's in a cabinet. Who's, mm. who's a, well, nobody yet. <laughs> no, nobody. Well, we know yeah. so far, we're speaking here on Monday afternoon, we know mm. Ben Elliott has moved aside as co-chairman. Yep. We think Jake Berry will be the, yep. the single chairman, which is a good mm. nod to the Northern Wall. Mm -hmm. That's all we know so far. We might know more overnight. But let's, as we as we see fit, you can say Chancellor's going to be... Well, Kwasi Kwarteng uh, is, uh, is definitely appears yeah. to be uh, uh, the, the new Chancellor. They're very, they're very close, the two of them. They both became MPs at the same time. They've been very, very aligned on policy, particularly economic policy, right from the very beginning. That's going to be vital. Um, yeah. They did spend time at the Treasury together as well. When she was Chief Secretary, mm -hmm. Kwasi was um, PPS to Philip Hammond. So they've sort of tracked each other through their political careers, and they even live quite close to each other. So they're, they're very, very close. She needs to have a Chancellor who is going to work hand in glove with her. That She can't afford to have rows and, no. um, you know, people standing in the way um, over the next but two But she's years. appointing her own Council of Economic Advisers, Camilla Tomney. Is yeah. that a worry? Well, because more experts, more views, I know, but more then, disagreement. To be fair, because she wants to break the Treasury orthodoxy and there's a kind of single view there, 
Um, Quite clearly, a brown-like view, discuss. Yeah, a very brown-like view or Sunak-esque view because he inherited Brown's mantle on that regard. She wants the likes of, you know, Patrick Minford and Gerald Lyons and others in, which mm. is quite extraordinary for Romana because, of course, these are all people who are advising on mm. sort of pro-Brexit economic policy. Gordon's there talked about her right-hand man. I think her right-hand woman is going to be Therese Coffey. Mm. Um, That's surprising. Well... <laughs> I've been looking into their relationship today for a piece for tomorrow's paper. And what's interesting is they've known each other for years. She's also 2010 intake. They've known each other since they're mm. just post-Oxford student mm. days. East Angler she, MPs. Yeah, but nearly neighbouring constituencies, rural, but also very different people. I mean, Liz, a bit of a loner, not necessarily serious. Therese, team player, very yeah. serious, staunch Catholic, details woman, whereas Liz is more Likes of a visionary. Likes karaoke. Yeah. Um, I think they're both kind of, somebody described them as game old girls who like a drink. I mean, that's yeah. fine, isn't it? We can accept yeah. that. Um, so she's at the moment being talked about for health secretary, but also some chat, you know, and could DTM. she go in as deputy PM, which will be an extraordinary. She did her first cabinet meeting yeah. in 2019 when you know, Liz Truss accompanied her I think, to Downing I think, Street. you know, DWP had a good pandemic. Yeah, well, you we know, didn't hear any scandals. UC didn't tip over, right? Yes. It, it coped with a million yeah. more jobs, uh, job seekers on that. And I think she got zero credit for that. Everyone said it was IDS's win. Yeah. But actually, the person in charge was Therese Coffey. Yeah. Mm. So Gordon Rennick, who else? I mean, there's some continuity appointments, of course. Ben yeah, Wallace, ben, you ben think? Ben Wallace, we expect. I think Ben Wallace also is a possible shout for Deputy Prime Minister if she appoints one. Uh, he was hugely popular with the members. He, yeah. mm. You know, the polls suggested that at the outset they wanted him as PM. So... He, did, he want didn't to. want it. And the trick to make a good no. deputy is someone who doesn't want your job. Yes. Well, which yes, is why, exactly. why I might favour Wallace. Yes, but she might want to show the, the membership that she's given Ben Wallace a bit of a promotion, which would go down well with her. Okay. We are looking at Suella Braverman for mm. Home Secretary, as we know. Uh, again, somebody who's, uh, who's very closely aligned with Truss and somebody who, more importantly, came out in support of Truss as soon as she was knocked out of the yep. leadership race. Unlike Pretty Patel, who we think is out. Or well, yeah. we'll come to who's off in the, in the moment. But Suella Braverman, of course, will take on the quotes lefty, close quote, lawyers. Yes, she's Liz been Truss. really robust on that. And also Everybody. in the leadership campaign, she was talking about leaving the ECHR and all sorts, which yeah. is very, very punchy. Mm-hmm. Um, Kemi Badnock, we think, has a role, although we're trying to work out what Culture, it is. maybe? Well, Obvious. she wants DfE. to move away from culture, mm. apparently. But education. maybe the department for levelling up. There's also Leveling talk up. of education. Um, Our old friend Rhys Mogg. Rewarded finally at the Treasury, we think, or mm. Business Secretary, I think perhaps. Business Secretary, I've heard, but yes, could be any of these. Um, and then we were wondering Foreign about... Foreign Secretary, the, James Cleverly. James Cleverly, he's yep. been at the forefront of things. Uh, maybe a role for Tugendhat, just talking uh, about other leadership Number two, China Hawk. Yep. Exactly. On, uh, on what side. about Penny Morden? Where would where will mm. Penny be placed? Turn down wonders? turn down chairman apparently and won't do Northern Ireland. I think she well, I my my suspicion is she'll be offered a, a number two role like Armed Forces Minister at Yet again. Cabinet. Sideways but, move from trade. Yeah, and I suggested that in the in the piece that you yeah. referred to, and I did get some pushback from Penny's people who mm. suggested that she was definitely sh- looking at a bigger job or, or so they Let's think see. anyway Did she, she was st- straight out of the traps and on the media broadcast round immediately after the announcement now you don't do that no. by accident and without knowing that there's something in it for you so I think mm, a more yeah. senior cabinet position how yeah. about her as foreign secretary we're talking about cleverly not silly idea look great yeah UK PLC with these big yep. jobs internationally led with by, by gosh three of the four great officers of state women in them about How, time too, Chris. It's about too, time too, Chris. Camilla Tomini. Goodness I'm a feminist me. too, like Gordon Rayner is. We're all feminists Goodness in this me, room. This is starting to sound like the worm that turned on the two Ronnies, Chris. <laughs> 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 who is Anna Dawes? Let's not ask the question. Um, who The jobs and jobs people don't want. Northern Ireland. Yes. Why is that too difficult what, box? Why has there been suggestions that Sajid Javid's taken Northern Ireland? It's been offered, to, I've been told, offered to Javid. Um, Lewis might take it back. Brandon Lewis may want to. If he thinks he can get a win. I mean, politically, it Robert Buckland has not turned it down. I have it on good authority today. The rumour was he had turned it down. He wants to stay at Wales. Yeah. Um, but, no, I, think Burns, wants, I think he wants justice, but I think he probably will stay. He'll accept Wales, Wales yeah. correct. What's Conor, happening to David Frost, your friend who you're interviewing very, very soon? Uh, link to that in the show notes of this episode, listeners. Um, he wants a job in the cabinet and nothing else will do, is what the reporting at the oh. weekend said. Not from him himself, so I haven't checked it with him. I don't wow. know. He definitely. He wants a role, doesn't he? He wants to be an MP. Mm. Is that right? Or earn money he, elsewhere? He wants, a, he wants a, a role that is a proper job. That's the, yeah. that's the problem, I think. They want to make him Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster. 
Which would be good, because he knows the captain office very, very well. Well, except that the suggestion is that it would be a much smaller role than the one that Michael Gove did when he had that job. Because yeah, he had the I union added in. That, um, that Frosty wants something that is a proper, chunky job, and it, mm. he may be unconvinced that that's what he's being offered. There's also an interesting sort of tug of war going on behind the scenes, I think. I mean, Frosty isn't necessarily a grey hair, but he's perhaps more in that camp than some of the newbies. And IDS's role in the mechanics of Leader of the House of Commons? Well, Has he said yes? You you must have asked him in the past few days, Camilla. Does he want that? I think he wants a department. What's he said to you? Well, I think there's a a few people vying for DBM, you know, at the end of the day, because it's the second most powerful role in government. So... And actually, I'm going to chuck one at you. Yeah. David Frost from Northern Ireland. Now, that gives but, him a seat at the cabinet table. Mm. It gives him 120 civil servants. It's not really a job where you manage anything, but you are delivering Brexit, which is what he, he was trying to do under yeah. Gordon well, he Brown. Needs to re- under re- he needs to... <laughs> Boris Johnson. Gordon Brown. Oh, God, it's been a long day job. Um, he needs to redeem himself on Brexit. A little bit, because there is a sense some of he the leaders think... He walked out over, over yeah. tax. Oh, yeah. you know, no one knows why he resigned even now. You, you're meant to be a staunch Brexiteer. Get the job mm. done. He can get huge political capital if he succeeds in that. Plus, I mean, he was a good negotiator. That's mm. why it was so disappointing yeah. when he did walk out. But you didn't like him. Uh, your sceptics loved him. I, yes. I wonder whether... If you're listening, Liz bad, Trust, not a bad shout there. Of from course she's listening, podcast. Chris. Goodness me. Of course she's listening. Now, who, who are we saying goodbye to? We're saying goodbye to Pretty Patel almost certainly overnight. Uh, mm. Dominic Rob. Dominic Rob. Uh, we'll be seeing Grant Shapps. Grant Shapps, I It's a shame, I isn't it? Yeah. Shapps, I mean, spreadsheet Shapps, no, I think Brandon may to stay. be fair to him, can get jobs done. It's a mm. funny one. He could have stayed at Transport. Mm. Couldn't he? Yes. Obviously, Who's going to get transport then? Well, possibly Kemi. That, that could be Kemi one. Oh, yeah. take Kemi versus the unions. Actually, Badnock versus yeah. Lynch could be quite. You haven't even mentioned Rishi Sunak in this conversation. Well, he's oh, not well, in he's the cabinet. Not going, but I mean, he's not going. Not in the cabinet. Well, he, he isn't in the cabinet now, is he? But, so, we might get a job. but there's no return no. for him. There's he was supported no by return he, for he, he, all MP. He won all of the rounds of voting with his own MPs. Yeah. Yes. I know why why are you dumping him then on the back benches? Because, you two, because you're in power. Because it was because so she, bitter, wasn't he it? wouldn't take her in his cabinet, and I don't think she wants him. I in mean, her. Jeremy Hunt took some time out, didn't he? Wrote a book about the NHS, and then was offered jobs apparently, and then took the job at the uh, Health Select Committee. But I mean, is that what you do? Is he now going to be at a Select Committee? But chairman? Rishi's not going to look like this kind of very decent and upstanding. I'm here for the people type politician if he gets well, offered a like serious that, job, and then turns it down. I mean, what if he was offered, for instance, health and then he didn't take it? Mm. It's like, oh, you've said well, that you're you're here for the benefit the rumor, of all it? of us. That was the rumour. Because mm. it would have literally, pardon the pun, been a hospital pass. Mm. Um, also, this is interesting. Again, spoke to a Sunak different ally today, insisting that he was to remain in politics for the rest of his days. And I said... <laughs> Don't be daft. We won't see him for <laughs> the dust trail that. left by his right. Lamborghini. All eyes are on the to departure Sil- gates tonight at Heathrow. Yes, yes, Silicon Valley, here we come. <laughs> um, but but this person was absolute, who has been ready for Rishi for quite some years, <laughs> may ready I add. For Rishi. And they said, no, he's there for the duration. He's yeah. there to serve the people of Richmond, Yorkshire. I don't see it, Is Chris. it worth a hassle for me? Do you want to do it? I mean, you, I think you get one chance, one chance of being Tory leader. And that's why I think Priti Patel didn't go for it. I think she'll run for it when the Tories, if it always lose next election, she'll run for opposition leader because. But then she'll be up against the likes of Badnock and things like the. T- it's all yeah. moved on. She hasn't run yet. You see, I think she's got a chance. People have lost their jobs have played the campaign badly, haven't they? Rob and Patel, bizarre. Well, Jeremy Hunt. I mean, you yeah. know, he was the you know he was the future once. Indeed. Yep. Labour. Mm. Are they delighted or not? You have got a real choice here in politics. You've got a real a, yeah. a, a real sell to the right for the first time in 30 I, years. And that may or may not help Labour, Gordon. Yeah, I think it, I, th- I think it's too early to tell. I mean, I, I think if she starts well, then um, it's going to be bad news for Labour. Um, I think that if she, you know, if she falters, then they will be rubbing their hands. We just, I, I honestly think it's too early to know because mm. what, we don't really know how she's going to perform in a, in a crisis. No. Not as prime minister, anyway. No. So it's all it's all about what what sort of start she gets, yeah. and if she gets off to a good start and gets the people behind her, and if her policies yeah. start to look as if they're working, then I think it is. Will a she have yeah. a chance to do policies? She's got probably a national strike, winter of discontent, autumn, summer, spring of discontent. But if she's robust about back yeah. to my white and blue collar workers being united thing, 
if she is robust on people who are stopping Britain from working, mm. to coin the such and such phrase, mm. then actually I think she can succeed. Look, the lefties are all going to side with Labour anyway. Mm. It's not like it's a Corbyn offering. So you're going to mm. get lefties and left of centre moderates going mm. in that direction. This is about picking off now the sort of Liberal Democrat voters mm. in my soft mind. Left. The soft left, the soft right, and saying to them, look, economically speaking, we are better than either the opposition also, or, or, or yep. Ed Davey. There's also a trust issue, Gordon. Rayner, isn't it? Because the, the people might look at look at Labour's offer and say, "Would well, you want Angela Rayner to have the keys to power, or do you want somebody who can face down the unions and yeah. get Britain working again?" Because I wonder whether industrial strife could work against Starmer in favour of trust this this winter. Well, I think certainly what what can work against Starmer and in favour of trust is that we've already got the highest tax burden for seventy mm. years. Can Labour go into an election saying we're going to tax you even more? Mm. If they say yes, people are going to say no, thanks. Mm. And if they say no, then where do they go from there? What do they then just become the sort of, you know, yeah. soft soft right? I, I I don't know. I mean, I I do think that uh, it's very difficult for Labour to see exactly where the the sort of their their sort of territory is going to be for the next election, if you like. Mm. Yeah, if it's the Clinton esque sort of, it's the economy stupid. Come twenty twenty four, the question people are surely going to be asking themselves is: Have we weathered this horrific storm better than we thought? Do I feel like I have got yeah. slightly more money in my pocket? If so, I'm going to stick with this lot. If it is absolute economic calamity and the whole thing gets even worse, then obviously it's a no-brainer and change is afoot. But if she can in some way make people think that they have survived this more financially intact than they feared, she might just be able to take them over the line. And she will get a lot of credit because the, the scale of the, of the challenges in the inbox is so massive. War on continental Europe, energy prices spiralling, cost of living crisis... Gordon Wayne, you're giving me your, your cynical <laughs> journalist look there. I'm not sure they get any credit for for, for the fact that, that they're facing problems that are Twelve years that in. are not of their own making necessarily. Mm. You know, people will blame the government for, for whatever they yeah. think is wrong and, and that's that is that's that. Just finally, Camilla Tomini, Boris Johnson, what will he do? Ooh. Um I mean I think he's looking to make a little bit more dosh. Put hay in the loft, as they say. Um, put hay in the loft. I think the uh, public speaking circuit is about to get a, um, you know, a thoroughly charismatic <laughs> <laughs> a figurehead. I don't know. Will is he, he run again for leader? I mean, you're hearing... There's this speculation. Oh. I know you've done loads on the Truddus movement. Um, well, that's, that, that, that's the members, 10,000 members saying... They want him back. I can't I mean, see it. We, we did ask Liz this, didn't we, um, some time ago? You know, how do you solve a problem like Boris? Do you want him proverbially inside the tent, something what did she out, say? or outside in? And I think the consensus was that Boris just <laughs> pees everywhere. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't matter where he is in the tent. What a dreadful image to uh, um, leave but us look, on. It's interesting that he's not going to go to conference. He overshadowed Theresa May. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more love between Trump I was told and he would have gone if, if Sunak had won. Of course he would have. He would have, oh, yeah. he would have <laughs> had cues around the block for him, yeah. yeah. Well, Gordon Rayner and Camilla Tomney, our associate editors, thank you for joining us this week on Chopper's Politics. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Well, listeners, do you put your trust in Liz Truss? Or are you concerned for what's in store? Let me know by emailing me, chopperspolitics at telegraph.co.uk or on Twitter, we're at Choppers Podcast. And as Westminster gets back into gear this month, please do keep up with the latest cabinet movements in my daily Choppers Politics newsletter, bringing you the best Westminster insights straight into your email inbox every weekday. And the link to sign up will be in the show notes to this episode. Thank you again to my guests, the Telegraph's very own Camilla Tomney and Gordon Rayner. And we'll put a link to Gordon Rayner's forecasting of what the new government has in store for Liz Truss in the show notes to this episode. Thank you to the producers behind this podcast, Giles Gear and Louisa Wells. And most of all, and most importantly, thank you to you for listening. And do remember, if you can, please buy a copy of the Daily Telegraph. I know you won't regret it. Until next time, though, cheerio!